Hi, I'm Laura from The Woken Mind, and this video is on a download that I got about the sacred marriage between the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. I felt like I needed to go to sleep, which usually happens when I get these downloads, and then I kind of almost pass out, and then I see um, images. And the image that I was shown was an image from the movie The Little Mermaid. What I saw was the marriage between, or the attempt in marriage, between Eric and Vanessa, who actually is Ursula in disguise. And I was told that this is the representation of the um, union between the divine masculine and the distorted feminine template, which is what we're trying to work through right now. The character Vanessa is a representation of the vanity and the emptiness that is occurring right now um, in our world and what the toxic masculine energy or the distorted masculine energy is clinging to. And um, it's through the conscious realization of the spell that the masculine is under that he can finally, you know, snap out of it and um, then unite with the divine feminine. But right now, what we're currently going through is that the masculine is going through this death process and this realization that he's been duped pretty much, that he's been under a spell and serving um, a false god. So years ago, I was doing some research on the meaning behind The Little Mermaid, the Disney version, and the Hans Christian Andersen version, and the differences between the two. And I stumbled across some information that described Ariel as the representation of Mary Magdalene. And they also showed this image here where Ariel is looking at this painting by Georges de la Tour called Magdalene with the Smoking Flame. So it's actually a painting of Mary Magdalene. So the animators may not have been consciously aware of what they were doing, but they were feeding into this um, archetype here of the Divine Feminine. And that's what the modern Little Mermaid story is all about. It's about the reemergence of the Divine Feminine. Since the fall of Atlantis, the Divine Feminine has lived in our subconscious and the patriarchy has run the show and dominated things. And Ariel represents the hidden subconscious feminine that we are not capable of honoring and bringing consciously into our world. Ariel actually means the Lion of God in Hebrew. Ariel is also symbolic for Jerusalem or New Jerusalem. And this is what is coming as we reach the end of the Piscean Age and move into the Age of Aquarius. We're going to see the shift from the patriarchy dominating things to the death of the toxic masculine and the sacred union between the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Carl Jung actually predicted this process where the masculine, the toxic masculine, or the patriarchy begins to crumble and die. He referred to it as enantiodromia. So this is what happens when the subconscious creates a conflict with um, what's happening in our physical reality. Eventually, the tension from ignoring the subconscious opposite, which is the feminine, becomes so intense that a natural equilibrium occurs through the breakdown of the conscious life which 
for us right now is the patriarchy. So a lot of tension, a lot of conflict leads to the balance. The breakdown of the distorted masculine and the patriarchy was also predicted in the Bible in the book of Revelations. And this is the book that we are experiencing right now with the end of an age and the reemergence and balance of the masculine and feminine and the sacred union between the divine feminine and the divine masculine. In order for this sacred union to occur, the divine masculine has to go through this death and rebirth process, this resurrection. And the divine masculine also has to realize that he has been tricked and he has been deceived and that the patriarchy is trying to feed a narrative that keeps itself alive. We have been tricked into believing that the serpent was evil in the Garden of Eden and that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute who had no purpose. But this was all the patriarchy recording our history in a way that kept us in the dark and did not allow for that equilibrium and balance between the feminine and the masculine. The truth is that when the masculine began to dominate our conscious reality, the Lilith archetype was created. And the Lilith archetype is the representation of the rage and anger and resentment that came from the feminine being downgraded to our subconscious. Lilith has been represented as a prostitute and a seductress and a demon. And what she actually is, is the shadow version of the divine feminine who has been left in our subconscious and created these dark qualities within all of us. And in order to bring the balance between the masculine and the feminine, Lilith must be healed. This brings us back to the image that I saw when I had the download occur of Eric, the distorted masculine, under the spell of Vanessa in the story The Little Mermaid. In order for Lilith to be healed, Eric has to break the spell and realize that Vanessa is not the true feminine. Vanessa is the representation of the superficial feminine. She has the beauty and she can present herself as the divine feminine, but she actually isn't the divine feminine. She's a representation of the Jezebel spirit who is often confused with Lilith, which makes things really challenging for the divine masculine because he must figure this out. The masculine must realize that what he's clinging to is a fake version of the feminine. It's this devoted wife, devoted mother archetype that actually is an enabling archetype that wants the masculine to continue to cling to this imbalanced patri patriarchy and this material world. In this image, you can see that the people are bowing their heads. They think this is the right thing to do. But if you look at Eric's face, who is the masculine, you can see that he looks a little bit concerned and that he can tell that something is a little bit off here. Um, he's had Ariel already come to him, so he knows what the divine feminine looks like, but he hasn't quite figured out who she is. Right now, the masculine is working on breaking ties with the false, superficial feminine, the empty, superficial, vain life, and slowly is beginning to remember who the divine feminine is. 
so that he can integrate the subconscious feminine into his conscious reality. The K-pop group TWICE actually subconsciously channeled this information into their song that's out right now called More and More, where they're talking about the divine feminine slowly re-emerging into the conscious mind of the masculine as he goes through this breakdown and how he starts to remember who she is and starts to crave a union with her. In order to break the spell and unite with the divine feminine, the masculine has to remember who his true counterpart is and who came here to save him. And that's going to happen through the process of an antiadromia where the ego is broken down and the patriarchy collapses and the masculine finally submits to union with the feminine. The sacred marriage is the unification between the divine masculine Christ and the divine feminine Christ. And it occurs in the book of Revelations and it is what frees us all from the matrix reality where the material is worshipped and the spiritual component of ourselves is ignored and kept in the subconscious. Thank you for watching. Uh, I really enjoyed making this video. I think I'm going to be making more like this in the future. It's such a great way for me to get out these images and messages that I'm receiving from the spiritual realm and get them to the people who need to hear them. So I am sending you lots of love and strength and courage during this very important time.